what was your experience of women, you know, before you met this uh, Ukrainian lady? I hadn't dated for a few years because I was too busy traveling around Europe at the time, like for several years. I had maybe, I would say, two serious relationships before that, but uh, nothing groundbreaking. Yeah, I've always said that Eastern European women are women on hard mode. A lot of a lot of guys dig their vibe. Hey, look, I know, you know, I fell for it for quite a few years in my twenties. I dated, you know, Eastern European women almost exclusively. Mm-hmm. Um, but they are women on hard mode. They're very hot. They're attractive. They're sultry. But uh, they're a handful too. Anyway, yes, keep going. I agree. Fill us in. Yeah, man. fill us in. Okay, so so you asked me how I couldn't stop this. I mean, I physically can't stop her from leaving. She's leaving. I at this point, I'm not working in Canada from home. anyway. You can't, right? Exactly. I mean, there's nothing. My hands are tied. Literally, I can't force her from leaving. She said she's going, and so I was basically sitting at home, taking care of the kids and taking care of her, of her mother. Mm-hmm. So, along the way, as I mentioned, she found one guy that ultimately fell, fell in love with her, and now we're getting close to the sort of the separation period. Now, in uh, a few times a year, she would go on these big four or five hour dinners with this colleague that also graduated here from uh, UBC, the University of British Columbia. Mm-hmm. And then in January of 2018, she went to a conference in PEI. Yeah, you know where this is going already, right? And she spent four or five days staying at this man's house while she attended there. And then she, when she returned from her trip, she made the announcement that to me that she was now in a serious relationship with this professor at uh, the University of Prince Edward Island. So that kind of solidified things. And from there, things really, uh, really started to, to escalate. And now all along, I kind of felt like, like I was objecting to her going out, but also part of me felt like, and I feel kind of, I was stupid to think this, but I thought that she'd never cheat on me because of her strong Ukrainian morals. And in hindsight, I just think it's probably highly unlikely that she was faithful during that time. And even during the trial, when I can my assure lawyers... you, she wasn't faithful during much of the marriage, the way that you describe it. <laughs> well, <laughs> even during the trial, when my lawyer was cross-examining her, when the lawyer mentioned about you know this infidelity, you should have seen how upset she got. On she felt so she reacted so indignant, like how dare you ask me this question? Like she really got upset. And in fact, that outburst basically told everyone in the courtroom that yeah, the likelihood of her being uh, faithful was pretty pretty small did she end up bringing the babushka with her over to pei as well no she's leaving us all home so she's leaving us all here in vancouver to basically do our thing yeah no sorry so you're in vancouver but she's in pei right she just moved september 6th of 2022 so we're talking just over did she bring her mother with her too she passed away she passed away i see okay but the kids are with her right now the kids are with her right now she and the new boyfriend you know with the professor uh, they're engaged to be married I see. and that's where they're living right now uh-huh okay um you've got some points here about some of the stuff that went on during the breakup as well can you go through those yeah sure so um so she announces she's in this big this new serious relationship and things really start to escalate this is mid-january at this point she's now vocally telling the children that i am not their father stop calling me dad stop calling me papa he's not your father we're going to get a new father she would If we would start playing on the ground, she would like pick them up and say, okay, it's time for bedtime. Come with me. Sometimes even hurting them. And I'm taking audio of these situations because I realized things are really starting to get out of control. Uh, She's also excluding me from dinner, from food activities, any sort of activities that do with the family. And then on February 23rd. You're still living under the same roof at this time? Yeah. So she's attempting to alienate you from the kids, even under the same house. Well, I wouldn't use the word attempting. She is. She was. Alienating. Yeah. Uh, and on February 23rd, this is 2018, uh, she committed domestic violence. And so, uh, and there can't be any uncertainty about that because I do have it on audio. Mm-hmm. And on the next day, on the February 24th, I went down to the RCMB station. Um, uh, just the way things work in Canada here for our U.S. friends, I'm on the endowment lands, like university property. And so that's mm-hmm. federal land and they're under the jurisdiction of the RCMP or the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and not the local Vancouver police. So just explaining that quickly uh she i went down to talk with constable thompson and asked him what would happen if i press charges and he basically said if she gets arrested then she won't be able to work with children and that was her whole entire career and so i didn't want to basically torpedo her entire career i at that moment decided i'm going to deal with it through 
the family courts, not through criminal court. That was a big mistake. Things are escalating, getting worse. That's February 23rd. On March 7th, this is where- By this point though, like she's already going out for long weekends. She's partying, she's doing dinners. You're, you know, she's alienating you from the kids. Um, why did you play the nice guy card? I knew from talking with her that she wasn't going to be negotiating. Now, at this point, we already knew that we were moving out. So it was just survival mode at this point. Just trying no, to get No, but I mean, like you had time. an opportunity to basically pivot the direction of this uh, untying of the knot in your favor. And you didn't take that. Like, I mean, with divorce, look, man, it's I'm talking to people watching right now because it's a little bit too late for you. But it's like, look, I mean, the woman you marry is not the woman that you divorce. And in situations like this where you see the writing on the wall, you have to take any opportunity if ever it shows up. And it's rare. You had a good opportunity, but I mean, you just played the nice guy card and just continued on with the, you know, let's go through the due process. Like, why did you do that? I felt like I was, I I invested so many years in her education, helping her get through and get a career that if I had pursued domestic violence charges against her and had her prosecute, had her arrested, that that would undo all that work I had done. And I still, exactly. That was the DV issue. On the 23rd? Yeah, when you had to deal with yeah. the RCMP for Shut, the DV issue. Slapping on the face, uh, hitting in the stomach, and hitting me with uh, objects in the kitchen, like physical. And yeah. you had proof of that too, right? Like you had, like I the cops were like, yes, okay, yes, yes, yes. That have been, well, the cops didn't, They when they when you submit anything to, like here, at least in BC, they told me the process is, it gets submitted, they take all the evidence, and then it goes to the prosecutor's office, and they decide whether to continue the investigation or Did not. Did you have visible injuries on your body from her? I did. I took a couple of pictures, but I didn't pursue it at the time. Hmm. Just okay. stupidity on my part. All right, so you let that one go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then on March 7th, uh, 2018, so we're talking just a couple of weeks later, uh, again, there was a an altercation where she was... Um, and I had the whole thing on on audio, like from start until finish. It was only seven minutes long. And she basically escalates super fast. She starts hitting me. She's punching me. She's kicking me. And eventually it ends with me calling uh, 911. That's when the audio cuts off. And so I did call the RCMP. They did come uh, to the house. And they obviously, the police come in, right? They're separating everybody. They take me downstairs. They leave her up here, upstairs with the in, the in our home with the children. Take different statements Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then the police came back and said well she said a different statement than you do and i said well i have the whole thing on audio they didn't bother to listen to the audio they just said we need you to leave and i said well why should i leave i'm not the person who who assaulted this being they came back and she's refusing to leave i'll put here that you cooperated if at least you'll leave for a 24-hour cooling off period so i thought okay fine but make sure you put in there that i cooperate I just said, I just need to grab my my stuff because I was afraid she was going to destroy it. And I I left that night and I stayed at a friend's house that night. Mm. So um, that night. Did you have a lawyer at that time? Only on consultant basis. So I was talking with a lawyer, but I hadn't retained a lawyer yet. Did you get any feedback from the lawyer about the DV issues? You know, because she's obviously an aggressive person if she's punching and hitting you all these times, right? Yeah, he told me that the next time she does it, to call the police and have it stopped. Okay, so you were the one that initiated the call. You were the one that had the recording. And even yeah. though you had the evidence, they still made you leave. Yes. Did you get a chance to call your lawyer that night? Um, no, Before I did not. Before you left? No? Okay. No, I did not. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I leave. No charges are pressed. That night... She runs to the hospital, uh, Vancouver General Hospital here in Center <clears throat> City. And she tells the hospital social workers that I'm abusing her. And uh, later on, and I know this because later on, I got the reports from the hospital and she specifically said she should hold a nurse. And then later on, a social worker from there came to interview her. And at that point, that triggers the MCFD, which is the Ministry of uh, Family and Child Development. These are the social workers that can take kids away, okay? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's quite a scary thing. So all this is happening and I'm just, I get like, I'm staying at my friend's place and what am I doing? I'm transcribing this audio. So I'm thinking like, oh, I've got to get back and I've not get back at her, but I mean, I've got to get get this information to people so they can see it. And sure enough, the next morning at like nine o'clock in the morning, I get this phone call. I answer, you know, hello, 
hi, this is the Ministry of Fa uh, Family and Child Development. Um, we're the social workers here. We hear that you're abusing your wife. <laughs> just like, I, I said, well, actually, that's funny you should say that because I'm just in the middle of transcribing the audio where she is physically assaulting me. Would you like to hear it? And everything changed. That first couple minutes was extremely uncomfortable because they kept like this, sort of accusing me of doing this, accusing me of doing that. And then suddenly when I told them I had an audio tape and then she was like, can you be at your home today at 3 p.m.? And I said, yes. Can you bring the audio with me? And they said, yes. And so um, I showed up that day. This is now March 8th, 2018. I show up at the home. She's here and as she's walking in, she's holding up her hand with the little, you know, the little bandage thing on sent yelling in front of the children. Oh, you hurt me. You hurt me. You broke my hand. You broke my hand. And I'm just quiet. And I walk in and the, the social workers, they come in and they're now completely says, we need to hear the audio. First how thing. She, taking... How does she hurt her hand from hitting you? Yeah. 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 In fact, the results from the ministry, and they had to do it obviously an investigation, mm -hmm. is the results from there in their report, they specifically say, the mother likely injured her hand from assaulting the, the husband. Mm -hmm. In other words, and you know how it is, like if you do any sort of martial arts, if you don't know what you're doing and you're not clenching your fingers properly, you can easily hurt a finger, especially the way she was, you know, grabbing my stomach yeah, and course. kicking and punching. Mm -hmm. And even if you are trained, you know, your body's still gonna react and try to protect yourself, you know, in the face or in the stomach, it's uncontrollable. So, um, yeah, so they drag me into their room and want to hear the audio tape and they're just like that's it we're taking the kids away you know don't worry everything's gonna be taken care of and then they take her in the other room 20 minutes later they come out and say she's saying something completely different well what is it mm -hmm. i'm sorry we don't have enough evidence to take the kids away and then what my uh ex did is uh she left that day uh, with the children and there was nothing i could physically do to stop her from walking out the door Hey guys, I really hope that you enjoyed that short clip. If you did, consider supporting the creation of content by checking out my supplement line. Pinned in the top comment below of this video in the comments, there's a link to the unpluggedalpha.com forward slash shop. Uh, when you click through, you'll be able to land over here and the entire lineup is broken down by category that it performs best in, estrogen metabolism, fat burning, your foundational essentials for health, immune health, performance, and testosterone support. If you check out with coupon code ALPHA10, you'll get 10% off on your first order. There's also the option to use the subscribe and save model where regular shipments will be sent over to you on a regular basis, and that gives you a little bit of a discount, and your supplement facts are always broken down over here. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys have an awesome day. And again, check out that link. It's pinned in the top comment below in this video. Peace out.